Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. I am Mike at Filmboy24, and today we're going to fly a Super 8 film camera. You know, I want to take this time to thank everybody for the overwhelming support on my channel. This is a very new channel, and again, I am overly joyed at just how many people decide that they want to see this goofy looking mug at least once a week doing something silly, kooky, crazy, and always film related. Speaking of film related, before we get into soaring our Super 8 camera to all new heights with our jibs, booms, cranes, whatever you want to call them, I want to tell you some exciting news. I just received my second Aeroflex 16S, and I say second because I had one in the past, or maybe I had two, it's been so long. I had one about 25 years ago, and the worst decision I ever made was to sell it. I wish I hadn't. My wife decided to overjoy me with a very early birthday present birthday's not till April, and she got me an absolutely mint condition Aeroflex 16S. Expect to see some videos very soon. In fact, this one's already loaded with some Vision 2 500T film, 100 foot. I do have magazines for it. I had previously gotten, in a bulk of a bunch of items, a George Jensen 24 frames per second crystal sync motor, which I have since put on this new lovely camera. And it purrs like a kitten. I made a sort of a, I have the original variable speed motor and it came with the original power cord, the two pin to four pin, but no battery. So I did a, I mic rigged a battery for it I used not 8 volt, not 12 volt, but I stayed in the middle at 9.6 volt and it powered the camera beautifully. Haven't tried it with the, with the 400 foot magazine yet. I know that the torque motors are originally designed for 8 volts. Don't think 9.6 in a rechargeable is going to kill my torque motor. If it does, I'll be on the lookout for a new torque motor. Okay, now if that's done, please keep your eye out. Footage from this Airy 16S coming real soon, I promise you. It's already loaded. I just got to finish my battery pack, then outside, then film. What are we talking about today? Well, about 20 years ago, I formed and founded and formed and formed and founded a company called GlideShot Industries. Sadly, I dismantled that company about six years ago. So I did it, I ran it, ran it fully for about 15 years, did very well. And what I did was I designed and built a series, a small series of lightweight camera jibs and camera dollies and dolly kits based on the skateboard wheel design. Again, I ran that company for about 15 years, roughly. Sold thousands of jibs in varying lengths. Thousands of dollies, dolly kits, dolly track, track insert connector kits to people in 67 different countries. Every continent on the planet except Antarctica. Never got a call from them. At any rate, I shut that business down due to overwhelming undercutting competition. It became so out of control that my overseas competitors that stole all of my ideas were selling for half of what I was, although their quality wasn't even a quarter of what mine was. They were essentially started selling the same items, except for this one. This one was fairly unique and no one to this day has uh, really done exactly this. Basically their selling price was about my manufacturing cost. 
can't run a business that way. So I eventually had other interests, shut the business down after about 15 years and have since moved on. So before anyone asks, no, I apologize. I cannot build you a custom camera jib. I do have some of the material left. I sold most of the machining and welding capable equipment. So let's get right into it. I've always been fascinated by camera movement. Uh, my filmmaking partner for many years is also a huge fan of camera movements and he and I both believe that even slow, steady moving static shots are better than no moving static shots. I know that probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but if you are focusing on two people and you're moving slowly in, slowly out, slowly left or slowly right, it sort of gives your viewer a more compelling image than that. Now I know there are places where you need that and we have used them vastly over the years, but whenever possible, it's always nice to have that image moving. So I did something 20 years ago that I had never seen before and I designed and built a very simple four foot camera jib. It was a huge hit. I sold thousands of them. And throughout the next 15 years following, I built a four foot jib, a five foot jib, a six foot jib, eight foot model. And lastly, a prototype of a 12 foot two piece tilting head jib that I never ended up bringing to market. And one more nice, fun, little compact jib that I named the GSC 30 because it started at 30 inches in length and ended at around 46 inches in length. My telescopic jib. This one was probably my proudest moment in glide shot history because it was the neatest little device that I had ever come up with. Let me show you. It came in a nice sort of a Kudora or nylon black padded case. Now I'm going to show you some video here in just a minute of me assembling it outside when we put, uh, we actually don't put this camera on this jib, but we do put this camera on a 12 foot jib and I'll show you some footage of that in just a minute. So this is very well used because this was mine is what I deemed the GSC, which was Glide Shot Crane 30, roughly, to 46, roughly, inch camera jib. Let me move this camera out of the way so you can see. Now, the way this worked is I used a solid piece. I don't remember the exact dimensions. I think it's half by inch and inch and a half or inch and three quarter solid aluminum on the top and the bottom insert pieces. I also used a solid aluminum uh, tailpiece. What I did was put a th quarter 20 threaded hole in the innermost piece, slide it in, drop that. Tighten the knob screw here. And it's basically, it's done. The jib is now assembled. The only thing left to do was to mount your camera and mount the weight bar. This is the weight bar. Very small, very compact. Solid, solid aluminum. And I included weight bar clips so what you would do, and again, I'm going to go through this outside here in just a minute. You would put one clip in. These are just cotter clips, cotter pin clips. Insert the bar through the rear of the weight holder. Put the other clip in, the hole next to it. And now the bar won't come out. So you would mount your camera, which... We'll use a very quick example. 
you could either put, which 99% of the time we would put a little, like I have a Bogan 501 head, a little fluid head. You could put a, a tripod head on the end of the jib, or some people would just mount their camera to the front of the jib. And to do that, you would take one of the little included thumb screws like this, and you would put it through the bottom side of the mount plate into the bottom quarter 20 inch hole at the bottom of your camera. Your, your jib is basically ready to mount now to a tripod. And you have various mounts on the bottom of the jib plate for your tripod. Now the premise behind this was very simple. It's, it's, just, a, it's just a fulcrum. It's a seesaw. So weights here, typically about three times the amount of weight here as you have here. Now that rule applied to just about every jib that I created that wasn't adjustable. Now, for all intents and purposes, this was the only one that really had the adjustable weight column on the back of it and the adjustable length, the overall length. So essentially all you did was unscrew these two knob screws. You have to hold the front or it's going to woo, teeter forward on you. And you could expand as far as you wanted the overall length of the jib and tighten it up. Now you would put your weight here and to fine adjust the weight you could move the inner bar in and out and tighten it to wherever you needed. In a lot of cases you start by overdoing it and you put this all the way out because the farther out this bar was, the, little, the least amount of weight you actually needed. And as you can see, your camera, I don't, know if, I don't know if my camera's capturing all of this properly, but as you can see, the camera stays nice and level. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, nice, nice horizon level. Just like that. Stay down there. All right, we had to take the camera off. It was sort of getting a little teetery here. I have a very small workspace here, so I have to be cognizant. Whoa, have to be cognizant. Uh, one last thing I wanted to show you on this particular model is that I built in a dual, so either side, monitor mounts. And I would weld up these little plates that had three mounting hole options and then the attachment hole here and the little rounded half moon design here on the bottom would go around the nylon washer just like that and then you would put one of the thumb screws you would just tighten it into this this threaded hole in the side of your jib like so and then you could mount your monitor here so you could see obviously you need to be able to see what your camera is seeing so in most cases you needed a monitor now you could mount this on either side of the jib. It was left side or right side. So that was a handy feature. And we used it a lot. Every movie that I've been involved with in the last 15 years has used most of the equipment that I have built. Now one of the issues I also ran across was support. Anytime you do any sort of jib or crane work, you need a tripod or a stand that can withstand a lot of weight. Well, most of the like over-the-counter tripods that you could buy online, you know, they might be rated for 15, maybe 20, 25 pounds if you were lucky. When you put a tripod head on the front of this, mount a camera and then three times more of that weight on the rear and you add in the weight of the jib itself usually you've exceeded that weight limit i have broken tripods with these before many of them and i had a lot of questions about which tripod do i use which tripod it was very difficult to sell somebody a jib and say i don't know just find one 
So what did I do? I came up with my own tripod. Here's a quick photograph of what I came up with. Now that's the tripod that I will be using in my demo here in just a second. It was rated at about 250 pounds of weight because I never built anything that I couldn't stand on myself. And at that time I was pushing 240 pounds. All right, so I know this episode is already running really long, probably twice as long or three times as long as anyone cares to, uh, to watch. So let's step outside. I take this Canon AutoZoom 814 electronic and I put it on a 12 foot prototype jib that I built many, many years ago. Now I never put this jib into production because I, to me it just never seemed quite stable enough. There was a lot of sway. I didn't use any guide wires on it, but I always kept it for my personal use. Now I did end up making an eight foot version that took off and I sold tons of those. It is the exact same design with the exception of the very top bar where I have one thumb screw holding it together. I ended up putting two holes there and overlapping it even farther so I didn't uh, sort of buckle that top. And you'll see, I'll show you a picture of uh, the 12 footer here. So it didn't sort of buckle when you would raise and lower. It had a tendency to sort of mountain out on me. So anyway, I fixed that problem. And like I say, I sold five foot and eight foot versions. The five footer was a single piece. The eight footer was a, was a two piece, just like this 12 foot one. Let's go outside and let's experiment a little bit.
Okay. Well, that was a lot of fun. Now I'm going to show you the results really quick. But before I do, please know that there are a couple of issues whenever you fly a camera such as a Super 8, 16 millimeter, 35 millimeter, whenever you fly a film camera that doesn't have outputs, you sort of, it's sort of guesswork. Biggest issue is you can't focus. These cameras don't auto focus. So there's no way to focus. You need to do it pre-mount or, or before you actually start filming. You need to focus it and you can only do one shot focus outside of using sort of a follow focus or you know with a whip or something like that which is possible you really need two people to do that and you got to be able to follow the camera as it raises and lowers and that 12 foot jib goes about 11 and a half feet in the air so i'm not sure if i know anybody that tall so keep that in mind here is just a minute or so of footage that I got from this camera utilizing this roll of film. This old roll of Tri-X 7266. Here it is. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I did. I have a lot of fun doing this. It's in my blood. Hopefully it is in yours as well. Then we can be blood brothers and blood sisters. If this is the kind of video that you enjoy watching, do me a huge solid and punch that like button. Turn it blue for me. Subscribe. Leave me a comment. Do all the things I guess that you're supposed to do. I gotta say it. I gotta go through my spiel. And until you see this ugly mug again, I'll see you, every single one of you, on the next go-around.